fucking anarchy this is! Okay, well, yeah, it's a new boat, so it's our FAR 400, and um, this is boat number three for us, and um, it's a factory boat that's here doing a bit of uh, PR promo sailing in San Francisco, so um, our, our goal for the boat was to produce a, a modern and relevant one design that would have a look and a functionality about it that would make it a, a lasting concept for a while. So we've been very successful in some of the other one design boats we've done in that they've been uh, relevant for quite a long time. But obviously trends move and things change and you need to come up with something that's going to reach a bit into the future. So Enthusiastic about the class. I think uh, inside the office, quite a few of us, that's one of our favorite boats that we've designed. and. We've all done a lot of sailing on them, so yeah, to see the fleet coming back together, you know, Deneen's done a, a good job of sort of marshalling the people back together and getting some energy in it, and, and no, we're really, really excited to see the boat sailing again, and it's such a great boat, it, it deserves the, you know, the class organization and things to support it and get it all together. Yeah. You start there, and uh, then a couple big conceptual things you tried to lay on it. Uh, it, we thought to, to grow the, the class in, in a difficult time like this, you had to have some advantages and some, some things that were going to bring people to it. So, yeah, it's a modern, fast sport boat, uh, but we focused a lot on the, um, the movability of the boat. So trying to be able to create a boat that can fit in a container on a flat rack that can travel anywhere in the world very inexpensively. Uh, so the mast is two-part. Uh, so that it's bre you break the mast down to fit in, in the box. Uh, lifting keel, the rudder comes out easily, so you have a boat that can turn on its side and, and be really uh, accessible, easy to manage and, and assemble. So. so back here, um, you know, pretty, pretty standard stuff. We have uh, twin running backstays, and they're positioned a little bit down from the masthead on the rig so that we have um, a little bit more direct forestay control. So still supporting the top mast for spinnakers, but uh, providing a more direct forestay tensioning device. Um, pretty standard main sheet controls, traveler below deck, try to keep things clean up here. Um, in the back of the boat, uh, we also work to get the, the boom vang back in the boat so we get it uh, for high speed downwind conditions where you have uh, someone back here that can play the, the vang easily. Uh, leave Right out of a TP52. Yeah, so we're trying to bring a lot of Grand Prix features so that we've learned out of 52s or 42s in the Med Cup and bring them to everybody. So. Um, then we have a tiller. The boat's available in either a tiller or wheel configuration. The twin wheel configuration places the helmsman in roughly the same location longitudinally. Um, just forward of the helmsman, uh, we have a um, main trimmer just forward. So controls for the main. We have Traveler, Cunningham, and Outhaul. All below deck purchase systems led here. Um, and the winch sizing for the boat, we've tried to be really generous with the winch sizing. So nobody likes a boat that's under winch. So we've got a boat that's, that has all the tools you need to go fast and do things in a hurry. Um, we step forward in the boat a little bit. Obviously, the grinder pedestal is a big feature of this boat. So when we look at real Grand Prix sailing and the things that's changed a little bit in the last few years, um, obviously, those pros are enjoying um, you know, pedestal-driven hoists for the spinnakers. They're using halyard locks. They have string-line drop systems. So we thought that's something that everybody should have. It's just, just fun, and it it's easy, and, it, and it's good, right? So, it works really well. <laughs> so what we've done is we've tried to move all of the, the control lines and halyards to one side of the boat and to try to aim them at what would typically be your offside primary and on this winch we have a self tailing top uh, so uh, in the one design configuration sailing around eight people in the crew obviously you're gonna have quite a few maneuvers where you have the line in the self tailor and, and it has to mind itself uh, so Everything's set up here to be led directly to this uh, offside primary. In the case of like a jibe set, when this is full, you can take the halyard across to the other primary. You just have to tail it yourself there. Right now we have a few halyards moused out for the sort of windward leeward racing we're sailing, but there's two masthead halyards, um, a fractional spinnaker halyard, a backup jib halyard, and then a jib halyard. The jib halyard itself is on a lock, so... Um, here, the jib controls, we have car in, out, up, down, and we also have a Cunningham for the jib, so you can tension the luff. 
Well, yeah, an offshore is, a, we wanted to make a boat that could do some amount of offshore sailing. We recognize the majority of the sailing is happening inshore, but that there is a bit of a trend towards people want to go do fast, fun offshore races. So a boat that can do that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be wet and a fun ride, but, but it's all capable. Everything's designed for that. So we have, if you have a zero, um, the sheeting system, we have a barber hall location here. So you can barber hall a, a sheet for that. Right now we're also using that as an outboard jib lead, so we're keeping the jibs up downwind and so they have an inboard sheet and an outboard sheet on them. Um, and the way the halyards are set up, the, um, the primary halyard is, is uh, sized for a, you know, a, a reaching type uh, uh, tight luft sail and the sprit's, sprit's been designed for that as well. So, uh, so this is what, what we got Cunningham. Cunningham's just the jib tack Cunningham. Oh, they, in, in the pit here, we have two tack lines on the sprit. The uh, black one there is set up as the primary tack line, so it's it's a continuous loop pull extender tack line. So you, you hook up your tack and, and it pulls the tack out with the pole, and then you have a backup for peels. And we'll see how the peels go tomorrow if we do a little bit of harbor cruise. So we'll have to switch mode there a little bit. Um, and then if we look up in this area, it looks a little untidy now, but there's a cover here to cover the halyards. Uh, needs a little fine-tuning to get it to, to cover that up. But the, the goal is to have all the control lines nicely covered and sorted uh, so the boat has a real clean look about it. So quite a few of the covers there and over the below deck main sheet are, are yet to be fitted, but those are some of the casualties when you uh, assemble a boat quickly that's brand new. So. Um, in, in, the, in the pit area here also we have a, a below deck hatch um, and because of its close proximity to the mast it's a bi-sliding cover to try to get that working in a tight little area. Okay so the off-center hatch is set up for um, primarily for the string drop system so we tried to clear an area inside the boat so you're primarily going to set and drop on this side and you're going to have a clean path down the port side of the boat um, so when we go downstairs we can have a look at, at, at how that goes that way but the hatch is set up just to provide that clean lane so you're already past the mast uh, thwart ship and having a clean path for that see that beautiful uh, uh, clear-coated carbon uh, fair lead kind of thing there. Yeah, I know, and uh, the guys at Premier Composites have great workmanship and attention to detail, so there's a lot of nice stuff like that. So can we just take a quick look at the downhaul or the, the jib chrono? And yeah, so here on the forestay we have a, a turnbuckle for tensioning the forestay, and on the turnbuckle itself there's a shuttle car. Um, the shuttle car um, you tack the jib on that and it rides up and down the turnbuckle body for its range of motion. Uh, so pretty tidy little little package there and seems to work very well. There's a little little two to one there and then the rest of the purchase is downstairs and it gets split to both sides of the boat. You have the bow sprit which is obviously retracted and the two tack lines there. So all pretty clean and tidy there. You can see there's a lot of nice attention to detail and things like the bow pulpits and stanchions, which are all quite, quite nice looking arrangements. And Premier's building all that stuff. Yep, they're building all that in-house. And looking back here, you can see that the, the rig's been set up with all the halyards coming out of it quite clean and, clean and low. Uh, the green one there is the jib halyard, which is capable of jumping if, if you... And typically the jibs also, we're leaving them up until probably get below 8 knots true wind speed. So the jib stays up downwind, makes everything really easy and, and tidy. So that, um, And we also, the rig supplied by Southern um, has beautiful rigging. You can see the, the com uh, composite rigging, and the nice clean terminations on everything. And it's a beautiful rig. It's a proper Grand Prix rig and it should be a real strong selling feature for the boat. It's well detailed, well sorted, right. beautiful fittings on it. So it's, it's really a nice piece of equipment. Let's make well, <laughs> being, being a bowman, graduated. no, being a bowman is a function of uh, relatively low skill level, I assure you. So. Uh, you know, I, it's a fun part of the boat. You're always part of the action. You get to mix it up with the boys and, and have a good time. So I enjoy it. I, I like other things like mountain climbing and stuff like that. So I enjoy the, the adventure land components of it. Maybe it's not your typical role for a yacht designer who seems to make it to the back of the boat more usually, but uh, no, I enjoy it. 
So in, inside here, um, we're trying to do a couple things on the inside of the boat, and it's a good opportunity to address one of the things I think people have a lot, a lot of questions about. When they see the boat being flush decked and, and looking quite sleek, they think that there isn't a lot of room in the interior. So what we've done is we've, the boat actually has a reverse shear, so there's a little bit more shear height amidship and a fairly generous deck camber. That combined with a fair amount of freeboard, and, and you're happy to have it. Uh, so we take away the cabin sole, and you end up, you know, being able to walk relatively erect. I'm six foot four, and so there's a little ducking around the equipment, but it's a generous amount of space, and, and quite a few people will be able to stand and move around very easily. So what we think the interior does, I mean, obviously you have um, sailing things that your interior needs to deliver on, but we also recognize that to move boats, you have to have a place where people can come down to the boat show and sit and talk and do things like that, particularly if you get a rainy day. So. We tried to create this area in here where we have the hard, hard bunks, which are, um, have storage beneath them, so you have a nice place to keep things, but you also have a place where you can sit and talk and do things. Um, in the front of the boat, there'd be a head there on that plinth, so there's a, a head area there, and you can curtain that opening. Um, there's a galley module, which isn't present right now, but it, it uh, would fix here on the side of the boat, so you'd have your two-burner stove and your sink, things that you need to be CAT2 compliant. Right. Um, other than that, it's a it's a proper race boat. So yep. purchase systems everywhere. And yeah, so too. yeah, up in the front there, you see the jib uh, Cunningham arrangement split onto both sides of the boat. Yeah. Um, and you see the pole is all self-contained up there. And you and the the pole is also set up so it's pointing down forward. So it's it's sort of uh, parallel to the deck center line, which is disappearing camber as it goes forward. So it should drain out the front the residual water that's left. So try to think about those kind of details. But there's a real focus on trying to make a boat that's sellable and appealing. So we recognize also that there's a situation where you have a husband and wife and they come and they want to look at a boat and you have to show them something that has some visual appeal to it. So we try to bring some color in the boat and, and try to have it look nice and clean. Uh, inside here you can see some of the detail. Yes. Yes, so there's a jib track beam here across the, the boat to support the jib tracks. You can see the hatch garage. Some of the really nice details, like the chain plate fitting structure, and these are all beautiful parts. Um, so a lot, a lot of nice detailing and attention to craftsmanship. You can see how the asymmetry of the hatch and the takedown system work together. So on the port side where you're sitting, the hatch there with the roller behind it, um, and so the kite's coming down there and it's continuing down the port side of the boat so you can see the bunks are dropped on that side to open that up and the drop line system runs all the way to the transom and then from the transom it returns up through the cockpit sole uh, on the center line of the boat and can, can lead to either primary winch going downwind. So Behind the mast here we have your um, main controls that are getting led aft so we have the Vang, Cunningham and outhaul there. Uh, you're arrive in a central part of the boat where obviously we have a pretty big keel step here which makes a, a platform landing area in here so the way that the keel works it's a lifting keel but it has a plated head on it so that when it's fastened in the down position it's a completely secure arrangement you can't feel any residual keel movement when you're going on waves or sailing around it essentially becomes part of the boat it's part of the boat and then uh, these four fasteners come out here um, a post that system that fits here and at the deck head creates the purchase lifting area that then leads out to the primary winch. So it's a boat that you can come into a shallow dock area and lift your keel for approaching the dock, or it can be left fixed like this. In the fixed position, it has a single point lift for the, uh, lifting the whole boat, or alternatively, you could lift the keel, um, you know, at, at a um, marina you know, and you can lift the boat either way, onto the keel, off the keel. Yeah, so you have options, um, how you want to disassemble the boat, what you want to do with it. The way we were transporting the boat here, the bulb is fixed on the keel fin, but the bulb is also easily separated from the fin, so you have a lot of options. You could leave the fin in the boat, lift it, and take the bulb off. It depends how you want to configure the boat and use it. Now, the one rudder seems to be adequate. We, we didn't really have any control issues. We're still working on our jibes, so we come out of the jibes a little hot every once in a while, but I think uh, static downwind sailing seems like there's plenty of control plenty of bite when you do a one design boat the rudder is sized for what could be an amateur helmsman so it's it should be a forgiving easy boat
Well, obviously arriving late, we didn't really have any practice, so the first day of racing was really the first time we put all the sails up in anger and, and used them, and, and we felt pretty good about how that went. We had obviously a lot of things to work through, so the first day we ended up with two fifths, I think, corrected, and sailed around uh, the race course, of course, in front of some of the other boats. But yeah, the J125s are they're obviously well sailed. They're people that know the area, and, and they're probably a bit more polished in their crew work, so... The second day, we ended up with a couple of thirds, and you can see where, you know, your second's out of a second place, so you can see where the improvements lie, and certainly still a lot of things to work on for us, but feeling pretty enthusiastic about it, and uh, and the boat's a riot to sail. Downwind, uh, obviously, is where you're trying to make up all your time, and so we're, uh, we had quite a few long segments and runs yesterday over 20 knots, just perfectly in control and sailing and and the way the waves are you're not really running into waves you're so you're just planing easily downwind and having a riot so it's a uh, it's a shame you can't sail around the whole race course downwind all the time you know so it's, it's a shame we have to go back upwind but <laughs> it's a riot somebody's going to do some offshore sailing in one of these boats uh the right kind of race and they're going to have an absolute blast it's just just a hoot so well, the, the owner we're targeting is an owner who um, appreciates a nicely built boat, nice looking boat, and wants to campaign and travel with the boat. So obviously the way we set it up to be able to travel easily, it's an owner with the, that wants to take the boat and campaign around the world in different places. And, and the way the class is setting up right now, uh, five boats built and 13 sold, uh, they're already quite scattered. So we're fortunate that we have a few boats together, so we're at five or six boats for Key West, which is an excellent way to start. and. Uh, and then from there, trying to organize some, uh, you know, traveling road shows so we can get the boats together and do things. But that, that owner that wants to travel with his boat, that appreciates some of the high-tech features. Um, Maybe doesn't want to be as wet as a, a 32 or, a, or that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, so the, the 32 class obviously has great momentum and they have a great group of people. But the 32 feet obviously is still a relatively small boat when you get into some serious conditions. Super. He recognizes the owners get a little older, that they need a little bit bigger boat. And something around 40 feet seems to be a size where you have a real uh, niche space in our sport. So um, we think there's enough... You know, it's a, it's a competitive uh, market at the moment, so there's a lot of offerings and some things there. So we position the boat um, high tech and performance slightly above some of the other offerings and, and hoping to attract some, some people who want to travel and use their boats in different parts of the world and have a lot of fun. So. The initial group of owners is quite mixed. It's, it's quite varied. Obviously, we're trying to attract people out of some of the other... Um, you know, groups of boats like the FAR 40, but uh, also conscious that we don't want to uh, um, pillage an area that, that's that been very successful for us also. So I don't think we're trying to take from a, a class like the FAR 40, but we're, you know, we recognize that there inevitably there'll be some of those owners that, that want to move and do something different. But uh, at the same time, that's a great class and we don't want to, we don't want to ruin what they have. We just, uh, well, we want to design new boats and we want to sell new boats and do things there too. So. Uh, we're trying to really position it as something different, almost complementary to it, so it's, it should have an opportunity for both to work, we think.